This new Hunter Void build lets you solo flawless any active in the game, regardless of the level, even if that means you're massively underpowered. With this build, we will be using Void weapons and abilities to weaken enemies, cause crazy Void explosions, have volatile rounds, infinite grenades and max health on every kill while Devourer is activated, have infinite invisibility, and you as a solo player will have every match game shield and champion covered, so you won't need to rely on having a fire team to help you complete certain end game PvE activities. I myself used this build to do my solo flawless master weekly campaign mission for the Triumph, as this is my main hunter build I use on a daily basis. Now I have covered a similar version of this build using other exotics, so if you don't like this one, you may like the other version, which is better if you're intending to use this new hunter build with a team. But this one is the best hunter build in my opinion for a solo player. I will however go over all the exotics you can use with this build and give you the optimized setup that will work regardless of the exotic armor you choose to go with. Now this video is sponsored by USMMO, they offer cheap and reliable Destiny 2 Silver, so if that's something you're interested in, be sure to visit them down below along with my discount code. And be sure to leave a rating, comment, subscribe and share for more as usual. And now without further delay, let's become the God of Invisibility. Now as always, if you do like these new build videos and you want to see more top builds for Destiny 2 Witch Queen on a weekly basis, then feel free to check out the playlist down below for more as you might just find your new favourite build. And if you want me to check out a build that you've made, leave a comment or join our Discord server which is linked below also. Now with this build, you'll be able to stay invisible permanently. I mean, it's actually quite funny because the way this build works, you can literally just skip everything in the game. That's, well, skippable. But not just that, as this build is aimed towards a a player will have every champion and match game shield covered, which means you can do every single activity in the game on any difficulty by yourself. It doesn't matter if you're good or bad because you can just take your time and use the infinite invisibility to circle the map if you just need to take cover and regen your health. So the background gameplay here is a master weekly mission which I'm actually underpowered by around 10 levels and I was two manning this with a friend. So this is just to give you that feel of how you'd use this build in endgame PvE while you're under leveled and without a full fire team. This build is best used when playing solo though to maximise the build's potential. So doing this mission, the exotic quest, on master, a solo dungeon or a solo master lost sector for example, would be the best places to use this build. If you're taking it into a raid, you'll be better off swapping a thing or two around which we'll go over as we go through the setup. So the way this build actually works in say a solo master mission for example, is you'll start by ideally generating an orb of power by using your void weapon to get more kills and or use your dodge and then get a kill. These two actions should spawn an orb of power and a void element or well, then you can pick up those wells to increase your DPS, gain damage resistance, get volatile rounds and ability energy while also activating devour, which will then give you infinite grenades and instant max health and kills while you're killing enemies with the timer refreshing. Now in a master activity solo, you'll probably find it difficult to rapidly kill enemies so using devour is not essential, but it helps when you have it activated and you're using your super or abilities as that can really keep you alive. Now getting that orb to activate devour, you'll use the harmonic siphon mod and we'll get to that very soon but the problem you'll experience is that you can't pick up that orb if you have a full super which is why I recommend you actually always use that super when you can and preferably need to. But if you want to bypass the orb pickup restrictions due to a full super, you can actually put on a taken charge mod and a random charge light mod which will mean that you can pick up that orb even when you have a full super. But I don't recommend doing this unless you really want to rely on devour. This is really only useful in mid tier PvE content though. So getting into the actual setup of the build and starting with the loadout as a solo player, your best option for master activities is an arbalist. This will cover all shielded adds and barrier champs, then either a void pulse rifle for unstoppables or a void SMG for overloads. Make sure the weapon you use is actually void. This is because we'll use it to match our subclass so that we can spawn that orb with one of our mods later on, as we are making those void weapons better using other mods. For the heavy, I'm using another linear which will be for DPS. The SMG you can use which I recommend is the funnel web, basically the new recluse but better. But because this is a solo build, the loadout is really up to you and what you prefer. Your only restriction is that you need to use a void energy weapon ideally, so you can actually use those void elemental wells to buff the void weapons. Now going back to the heavy weapon, this build is optimised for linear fusions and rockets, so regardless of what you use, both will work with the mods. 
that we'll be using. Now if you have all champions that you need to cover, that's fine. We will have overload grenades to deal with overloads, while Arbalest deals with anti-barriers, and our pulse rifle stops the unstops. Just don't miss with that grenade, unless you have Devour, because you will regret it. But it's unlikely you'll need to have everything covered anyway, in one given activity. Now moving on to the subclass, we are a Void Mobius Quiver. You can use any super of your choice, but this is the best damaging super in the game right now, which you want to use on bosses, or a ton of adds that are swarm on you. But throw on a Gambler's Dodge to get our melee back instantly when dodging near an enemy, along with a Vortex Grenade. Then the aspects are Trapper's Ambush, so that we can use that melee to go invisible and make allies invis. Then we also have Vanishing Step to go invisible while dodging. With 100 mobility, you can chain your melee invis with your dodge invis to stay invisible permanently. As long as you have an enemy nearby to get that melee straight back, it really wouldn't matter which exotic you end up using. For the fragments, we have Echo of Undermining to weaken enemies with our grenade. Great for boss debuffing, which you want as a solo player, but we also have Echo of Starvation to get Devour when picking up orbs, and like I said, if you struggle to use this efficiently, you can swap this out, but for our last fragment, it is Echo of Persistence, which will make our invis and Devour last longer. 100% keep this one on, because you will need it. For the exotic armor, we're going to be using the 6 Coyote, one of my favorite exotics in the game, and we'll take a look at that very soon, but all the possible exotics you can use for this build are Graviton Forfeit to increase the duration of your invis, Assassin's Cow if you want to be invisible when performing finishes, Orpheus Rig to get that third tether shot for better DPS. Use this if you don't feel you need a permanent invis setup, but you can also use the Frosties, which will again give you that infinite invisibility. On the Oculus, if you're going into things like a GM or you're playing more with a team, but the exotic for this build I recommend is the 6 Coyote for that second dodge charge with 100 mobility. It also doesn't matter what exotic you do decide to use in the end, because you'll use the same mod regardless of the exotic you do use, and this build will remain just as effective as long as you do have that 100 mobility. Now for the main mods, the very first mod is Reaping Wellmaker. This is where we'll generate a void elemental well when we get a final blow with a weapon after using our dodge. With this we are using elemental ornaments just for that extra void well randomly when killing enemies. Always good to have extra wells if you can, but this is one mod you can swap out if you wish to. But for those wells generated, we will be using them on Well of Tenacity to reduce our damage that we take from enemies, basically the new protective light replacement. We'll also be using Volatile Flow, one of the best seasonal mods in the game right now that's broken with void weapons like Funnel Web, because you can almost melt everything quickly regardless when this is activated. But the last mod is Font of Might, to improve that weapon damage even further. You could stack this with an elemental charge and high energy fire, although I don't recommend wasting mod slots on these two, unless you have the extra slots from the master dungeon armor. For the normal armor mods, Harmonic Siphon is the first mod. We'll use this to generate an orb of power on void multi-kills, like the pre-nerfed masterworked weapons. This is so that we can get our devour. If you don't use that mod, you'll want to take off Devour if you're playing solo, but with that mod we'll also have our Heavy Ammo Finder, which you can use for your Linear Fusion or Rocket. This is also good because we are using Arbalist with a Heavy Linear, so you are getting two for one mod. Now for the Gauntlets we have our Champion mod that you may need, which will either be an Overload SMG or Unstoppable Pulse. If you need an Unstoppable and Overload, you can use them too if there are no barriers to worry about, or you don't use Arbalist. For the chest, we have Thermoshock Plating for Arc and Solar Resistance, as well as a Void Resist, so we have all elements covered, and you can double up on those Resist mods if you want. So for example, if you have a lot of Arc and Solar damage coming at you in a GM, use two Thermoshock Plating mods, but if you're going into easier activities, like a dungeon and you need more damage, put on your Reserve mod instead. But for the legs, we have Better Already. This is to start health regeneration when we pick up an Orb of Power. Again, you can swap this to Insulation if you have low mobility, but you'll definitely want your Scavenger mod, whether that is your Linear or Rockets. Lastly though for the class, we have got Lucent Finisher. This is to spawn heavy ammo when we defeat a champion. One of the best mods for a solo player, as heavy ammo won't be an issue when you've got a crap ton of champions roaming around, but I am also going to go with overload grenades with that. If you're going into easier activities where there are no champions, use a distribution mod instead. As for the stats, mobility is what you want to go to 100 first, that is required for this build to be the most effective. Then if you can, max out recovery to 100 and then either intellect or discipline. 
depending on what you prefer. Now this build is by far my favourite build out of all classes in Destiny 2, simply because having that infinite invisibility and devour makes this build stupidly OP for a solo player, and that is all thanks to the new Void 3.0 subclass update that launched with Witch Queen. So guys, that is your new Hunter Void ability build for the Void 3.0 subclass in Destiny 2 Witch Queen Season of the Risen. Next, as always, be sure to check out that playlist down below for more top builds that you may like for Season 16, and if you liked this one, then be sure to leave a thumbs up as it helps me out. But for now, give this one a try. The dim link is below, and I'll catch you guys in the next video shortly. Peace out.